For a future project, I need a small amount of lead chloride. There are many ways to make this compound. I chose the route I used in this video because I thought it was interesting and it shows the preparation of two other compounds, copper acetate and lead acetate. Each compound will be the precursor for the next step. If you are only interested in the preparation of one of these compounds, you can click on the according chapter. But before I start, a word of caution. All the shown compounds are heavy metal salts. They are toxic and harmful to the environment. The waste, solid and liquid must be collected and brought to a facility that can dispose of the waste properly. The first step on my way to lead chloride is to make copper acetate. I started by putting some copper wire in a large beaker. Then 25% acetic acid was added. To speed up the reaction between the copper metal and the acid, 11% hydrogen peroxide was added. As you can see in this time lapse, the copper gets oxidized and forms copper acetate, which gives the solution a blue color. To speed up the reaction even more, I heated the beaker. After two hours, the solution turned a deep, beautiful blue. To recover the copper acetate, the solution was heated to make sure all of the copper acetate is in solution and then it was filtered. The filtrate was boiled to remove the water and acetic acid. Here you can see the copper acetate collecting at the bottom of the beaker. At this point the beaker was heated gently to completely remove any water and acetic acid. The product are some green bluish crystals that look very pretty. They can be used to grow astonishing crystals, but that will be a project for another video. If you are interested in crystal growing, I can highly recommend the Crystalverse website. I will put a link in the description. As you can see, we got approximately 11 grams of copper acetate monohydrate. The next step is to make some lead acetate. I started by dissolving some of the copper acetate we made earlier in distilled water until I had a saturated solution. Then some small lead pieces were prepared by cutting up lead sheet. The lead was then added to the copper acetate solution. As soon as the lead is added, a redox reaction takes place. The copper ions are getting reduced by the lead and form elemental copper. Lead ions are formed and go into solution as lead acetate. Because the copper ions are responsible for the blue color, you can observe the progression of the reaction as the blue color is fading. I proceeded to add more copper acetate and waited again until the solution was colorless. In this shot you can see the copper that has formed and collected at the bottom of the round bottom flask. The now colorless liquid was filtered to separate it from the copper and lead. So after the filtration we basically have a clear solution of lead acetate. A little comment from future me because I forgot to mention it. As you can see the liquid is a little bit cloudy. This is probably lead carbonate that formed because I let the solution stand overnight. If you want to get pure lead acetate, you have to exclude any carbon dioxide. In my case it does not matter, because I am going to add hydrochloric acid anyways. If you want lead acetate as your final product, you could simply remove the water and would be left with lead acetate crystals. Um, but I don't want lead acetate, I want lead chloride. So what I'm going to do is to add some hydrochloric acid to the solution and the hydrochloric acid will form lead chloride with the lead acetate and the lead chloride because of its poor solubility will precipitate and um, sink to the bottom. I cooled this solution a little bit to decrease the solubility even further. You could also use sodium chloride, you don't have to use the acid, you could also use sodium bromide or sodium iodide if you want the lead bromide or lead iodide salt. 
all of these three are very poorly soluble, so they all work. So when we add some hydrochloric acid, we should be able to see a white precipitate forming. The lead chloride was filtered and washed several times with ice-cold distilled water. After drying the product, I was left with around 2 grams of lead chloride, which is more than enough for my next project involving cesium and LEDs. If you are interested in these things, consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. I also wanted to show you the formation of lead iodide. It is a very pretty yellow compound. For this demonstration I used the filtrate from my last step that still contains some lead chloride. Upon adding potassium iodide, a yellow precipitate is forming. This is lead iodide, which has a much lower solubility compared to the chloride. I also want to express my gratitude to all the patrons. It is awesome that you chose to support me. I hope you liked the video. Thank you a lot for watching.